Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna be doing something really, really old fashioned. In fact, I have a video series in mind that I wanna do this winter of a few other projects that kind of take me way back in time. But in this video, I have memories of you know being a little girl and my Amish grandma would make these hassocks is what we call them. They were just little upholstered footstools. Uh, they can also be called tuffets or ottoman or just a footstool. And they're made out of tin cans. And I'm sure some of you guys probably remember this too. I searched high and low on YouTube, did not find one video on a hassock being made. Then I also Googled it. I managed to find a few blog posts where people kind of explained how to do it. There's several different ways you can do it. I did talk to my mom and she remembered kind of how grandma used to make them. So I think I'm gonna use that method. I'm really excited about this. I love going back in time like this. It really evokes some memories. And I think it would be really cool to have one of these on hand because depending where you're sitting, it's just a nice place to rest your feet. So join me as I work on this and enjoy. So John was to Walnut Creek Cheese, a local market uh, this morning, and he bought me seven cans of tomato juice. And these are a 46 ounce can. And as you can see, it's more that you know thin kind, not the wide and fat kind. Uh, this is kind of the right size, what I was thinking to make this little footstool with. And I am planning on canning some chili soup with this tomato juice, in case you're wondering. Not gonna throw it out. The first thing I wanna do here is make a pattern by setting all of these cans together in kind of like a daisy shape, and then tracing out around and cutting it out. I probably could have made this a little bit simpler and folded my pattern in half and just cut around, you know, three petals instead of six, but this worked too. To open the cans, I just want to use one of those tools that just leaves like a V-shaped hole uh, to empty the juice. That way my cans will be more sturdy versus if I'd use an actual can opener and remove the whole top. from Marlene, my sister, wondering if I want to go with her to Hobby Lobby tonight. What perfect timing. I wasn't sure what kind of fabric I would use for my hassock. I thought I'd probably just find something around here, but now that I have the chance to go to Hobby Lobby, I thought how fun that will be to actually pick something really pretty out. Changed quick and let Marlene know that I will definitely go along. I, of course, love this store. There's always something pretty to be found in here. I even ended up buying some spring flowers. I can't wait to decorate for spring. And I was not disappointed in the fabric department, which I didn't expect to be. Found some pretty blue and white striped farmhousey type fabric. I also found some foam for the top of my hassock. got John to cut out the bottom for me. I was dressed to go somewhere and didn't want to get all dusty. Here I'm gluing the tin cans to the wood part. It probably wouldn't be totally necessary, but I thought that way the cans won't slide around one bit on here.
Next thing I'm doing here is cutting a strip of batting that I plan to wrap out around these cans. I measured the cans, it's right around seven inches, so that is what I'm cutting, just a rectangle strip of batting that is seven inches by whatever uh, length I need. I got this batting at Zinc's. I was in there the other day, and if you're ever in the area, make sure to check them out. Um, it's called Zinc's Fabric Outlet. I've talked about them before on here. Um, just a very, very interesting store. Of course, they switch their fabrics around all the time, so if I find something I like, I'm better off you know, buying the whole bolt, especially if it is for the Etsy shop, because they usually don't have any more of it. But they do sell some online, so make sure to check that out if you're needing some very unique fabric and good prices, and they also have excellent service in there. I decided to do a double layer of batting here to make it extra soft around the sides. Basically I'm just gluing this batting onto the cans, uh, very simple. Here's the foam that I got at Hobby Lobby. There's two pieces, it's one inch thick. I'm cutting the foam the same size as the pattern because I don't want it to stick out, you know, on the top. I'd even rather want it to kind of go, you know, in instead of, you know, stick out anywhere, if that makes sense. I always say this when I cut foam, but I should definitely invest in a cutter, like an electric cutter. Uh, but the scissors seems to work here. It's not as thick. I'm also adding a square of foam at the center of the top because I want my ottoman shape to be or I want it to be more puffy, you know, kind of in the middle, not dome shape, but just a little bit. I know my grandma used to add cute little loops to her hassocks. That way you could easily kind of grab a hold of it. So that's what I'm cutting here. So I'll show you guys what I have here and how I plan to sew this together in case you wanna do something exactly like this, but pretty simple, I think, although I've never done it before, but we'll find out. First of all, this little piece, of course, will just be sewn together like the ends here, turned inside out, that will be my little loop. And then for the top, I didn't mention this, but I am gonna have this a double layer. I just wanted the extra fabric for the top. And then the sides, I'll just have a single layer. And at this point, I'm not even sure, is this long enough? Like, is my fabric long enough to reach all the way around? But I'm gonna start sewing. I can always add a piece then if it isn't. But what I just, what I plan to do is just, you know, sew this together, like this side piece here. I'll just sew it to the petals of my flower shape here. And as I start sewing this together like this, hopefully you can tell here in the video, but um, I will let my end loose like this, like I won't start at the end of the fabric here because I want this to be available to then sew my other end by the time I get across here to sew that together then to create that seam. And it definitely would be nice to have the seam like in one of the creases here, um, like where the, the cans meet. That way it would be hidden. I'm gonna try to do that. And I should probably pin everything together, but I'm gonna try it without. Um, I think it should be easy enough. It turns out this fabric reached perfectly, which is awesome. I forgot to sew my little loop in, so I'll probably just use the seam ripper and open up a section to put it in. But first I have to turn it inside out here. 
I used to have one of those little tools that you use to turn something inside out, but I don't have it anymore. Not sure what happened with it, but in this case, I'm just using a safety pin to do this. I found these cute little pom-poms at Hobby Lobby, and you can't tell in this clip what I'm doing, but I'm sewing them along the seam or the upper edge of the cover. I know you can glue some of these trimmings on, but I thought since I have access to, to that seam, I can just sew it on. That would probably be best. Here I'm pulling the fabric really tight, stapling it to the bottom. I have my arrow stapler, love this tool. I'll link it down below in the description box in case you're looking for something like this. The last thing I wanna do here is add these little glides. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I sure had a lot of fun making this hassock. I'm already thinking of what kind of fabric to use for the next one. If I ever have 10 cans like this, maybe once our chili soup is gone. It's definitely not perfect. Next time I would try to make so my fabric is more even on top. And I'm almost thinking I probably didn't cut it large enough like the flower shape for the top probably should have been bigger since I put that extra piece of foam in the middle. Um, it just seemed it kind of wanted to pull one way for me, but I think all in all it turned out great. I'm excited to use it. I think as far as I know, I'll just keep it for myself since I plan to add a little more blues into the living room again this spring. And before ending here, I just wanted to give a big thank you to you guys for getting me to 300,000 subscribers. I still don't know what's happening, guys, if I'm honest. I don't know why anyone would wanna watch me, but somehow you do faithfully, and I thank you for that. It's been so much fun. I never ever would have dreamed that this would happen. I never even thought I'd get 100 subscribers, if I'm honest. I also wanted to thank you for all of the kind comments you left in my last video. Not that you don't always leave kind comments, but that last one was a little more out of my comfort zone. It was that bloopers outtakes video, a little more personal. And it just meant so much when I read through the comments, uh, all of the kind things that you guys said. I would have loved to respond to them all, but I just treated everyone the same again, I guess, and just didn't respond to any, but they don't go unnoticed. I read through them and thank you so much. It just made my day. I'm excited to share with you soon about some new things that are happening with White Cottage Company. Some new products we're going to have on the Etsy shop and then a big announcement coming soon. So stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.